seems like a long time since I did a video like this, so... Hi Astro Addicts, my name is Tim and welcome back to Astro Addict. The last time I did a video like this was about auto-guiding. Auto-guiding with a guide camera and a normal guide scope riding on the back of your main imaging scope. But this time this will be something different because this video is also about auto-guiding but it's about off-axis guiding. Ever heard of it? No? Let me explain. So I got my first camera with the wide angle lens over here so we can see everything of what I have here and of course for the close-up shots I'd say. Over there, the other camera with the zoom lens. I purchased one little piece of equipment for my bigger Ricci Cretchen. I still love this tongue twister telescope. So this thing is an off-axis guider. This is the, as it says over here, Deluxe off-axis guider with microfocuser from Omegon. As you can see I have most of my equipment from this brand, I'd say. But it's not sponsored, it's just something I want to show you because it's a very interesting topic, I think. So... I think I'm supposed to do some sort of unboxing now, so... What? Well, that was the unboxing. Okay, now to the interesting part of the video. This is an off-axis guider. It is basically, over here we have the 2 inch adapter. This can go right into your telescope. So the main telescope is over here and the camera attaches right back here. But what about this focuser on top here? As I said, I did one video on auto guiding before the normal auto guiding, I'd say. So this is off axis guiding. The guide camera is now no longer on the back of your main imaging scope, looking through a smaller scope. It is in here. So what does this camera see? In here you can see, I will also show a close-up of it, you can see a small glass prism. So right here in the 2 inch tube is a small glass prism that reflects some percentage of the light that's going to your main camera to the right 90 degrees and gets it to your guide camera which you can attach here. So the guide camera sees the exact same picture as your main camera. A small percentage of the light is reflected from your main camera to the guide camera. But isn't the main camera sensor blocked if you do that? Let's look at this closer. If you look for example at the Ricci Gretchen telescope I have. If you insert the off-axis guider into the imaging train behind the telescope and in front of the main camera you will see that the light that is going through the prism is not subtracted from your main frame because the camera sensor does not cover the surface of the prism. So, which means that the light on the main camera sensor is not at all darker. It's not blocked by the off-axis guider. The next important thing, your guide camera now has the same field of view as your normal imaging camera, which helps in precision of guiding but does not see the exact same picture. And if you want to know how to plan these imaging nights, since you can't just choose every guiding star because they are way darker, let's hop into a Stellarium and I will show you a very awesome technique to plan your imaging night with the off-axis guider. Okay, here we are in Stellarium. You all probably know this wonderful piece of software already. Let's say we want to take out the off-axis guider for a night of imaging. I will choose, for example, the Whirlpool Galaxy in Ursa Major. Here it is. So my telescope has a field of view of about 0.6 degrees, so this kind of magnification. And I already showed you in the last video the telescope tool over here. I have already set the camera settings and the focal length of the old telescope, so the small refractor. This red box you see over here is the final frame which I will see in my camera. 
And the helpful thing for off-axis guiding, you can go to the settings menu here and over here at telescopes you can. I already set the big Ricci Gretchen telescope and in sensors the camera all the same but if you toggle off axis guider and set the right distances in here I already did that we can now choose the right telescope the Ricci Gretchen and over here in the top right corner if we switch from 750DA to the off-axis guider and the Ricci Gretchen you see what the off-axis guider does. So this little square here is the small glass prism of the off-axis guider. The off-axis guider doesn't see the same picture as your main camera, it only sees a small fraction outside of the frame. You are able to rotate this entire thing and now you see why this tool is so useful. You want to find a guide star. So this orientation right now is the default orientation when you build up your rig. Everything is pointing north over here. And now you can set the angle over here and I know and I now know that there is a quite bright star in here, a magnitude of 9.1. I believe that even magnitudes of 15 could also be seen in maybe 3 second guide exposures. Still works well. Or maybe I could choose this one, so let's go over there. Oh, that's not what I want. Over there. So I know with a rotation of 340 degrees, so 20 degrees to the left. I know that there's a star here on which I can guide. This planning is quite necessary because the guide camera is getting just a small amount of light, way less than, you, than it would get if you use normal guiding. So finding a bright star is necessary because you have to get a bright star for PhD or your standalone guiding software to recognize. With this tool while setting up you can already rotate your off axis guider the way you want and you will know I will have a bright star in there on which I can guide. Because if you don't do this before setting up and need to find a guide star somewhere 360 around your object it will take much time and if you do this this way you will have more time imaging the object you want. And some thoughts on focusing of an off-axis guider. Some differences you have to keep in mind. Your guide focus and your main focus of your camera and your guide camera are no longer independent. You have to keep this in mind. You also need to refocus your guide camera if you focus your main camera. Depending on the back focus after you inserted the of axis guider you will maybe need a focal reducer a 1.25 inch focal reducer for your guide camera because depending on the focus point distance of your camera's main camera sensor the focus with the guide camera may not be able to achieve without a focal reducer or a extension tube and for the precision of focusing the guide camera in this case there's a smooth focus ring just the same like the guide scope i have and setting up this and focusing this of axis guider is really a pleasure. And now, since you know how to plan these imaging nights, let's, I'd say let's come to a conclusion. So what are the pros of getting an off axis guider? As I said it before, you have the same field of view, you have the same, all, you have almost the same frame, so your auto guiding is one on one, the ratio is perfect. With a normal telescope, like my refractor, with the smaller guide scope on top, the ratio from the guide focal length and the normal focal length is not at all one-to-one. -one. So, uh, so any accuracy step taken by your guiding software will not be precise enough for the main camera, which will be a problem with high focal lengths. The next thing why you should get an off-axis guider with a 
near a telescope like this one. If a telescope like this moves over the night, there's the possibility that the primary mirror in the back can be slightly, just some millimeters or even less, be flipped by gravity, for example, or notched a tiny bit. We would have a guide scope with the camera in the back on riding on top of this thing. It will not be the same anymore and the guiding would be off. But if the mirror notches a little bit with this here on the back, this still sees the same picture as your main camera. So errors like these are corrected immediately. And the obvious reasons, you don't need a guide scope, you don't need to pay $200 for a guide scope for a good one. And without a guide scope, less weight, better balance, more accuracy in imaging. And this little thing over here, a bit cheaper than a guide scope. And of course, I'm not gonna forget the uh, negatives about this one. Only a small percentage of the light is going to the guiding camera, so the stars in your frame will be much darker and you will have a much harder time finding a good guiding star. With some techniques in Celarium it's easier, but you will have more planning to do if you want to achieve good guiding. And since we have a Ricci Gretchen over here, this kind of telescope does have vignetting at the edges. It doesn't have a uh, uh, some the it doesn't have the types of lens distortions a refractor has but the vignetting acts especially at the edges of the frame can be quite drastic so this thing is picking up all the errors that such a telescope can have also as i said earlier the focus of your main camera and the guide camera are no longer independent so if you refocus your main camera overnight when temperature dropped, for example. You will also have to take care to refocus your guiding camera as well. So you will have to spend a little bit more time outside in the cold. My summary on this, this is not gonna be a review on this particular product. It's just a, I'd say, a review on off-axis guiding itself. An off-axis guider is suitable for large telescopes with a focal length of over 800 or over 1000 I'd say. If you have a refractor you don't need all the guiding, you are good to go with just a guide scope and a camera riding on the back. But if you go for larger focal lengths, a telescope like these, an auto guider will make things much easier. And a good thing in my case, this thing extended the back focus so I could take the last big and heavy extension ring off of the tube and I was able to get more weight off the main imaging rig. Always a good thing. Alright guys, I think I said everything I wanted to say about this topic. If you have any questions or comments or things that you might add to this topic, feel free to add something in the comments. I will try to get to each and every single one of you. If you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture on the, all the uh, new things I got. So. All of you, I said that everyone who guesses what this little thing here is, I said that they will be mentioned in the video with a thumbs up and up until this moment we now have 17.23 in the afternoon, so 5.23 p.m. No one has guessed it right now, so... No thumbs up for you, I'm afraid, but I think I will have lots of fun with this thing. Of course, every time I want to show a picture at the end of these videos, I ob obviously didn't shoot a picture through this in this video right here, but I think I have a few of them to show you because I reprocessed some old pictures and they turned out pretty good. I used a new software, which the trial version is over today, but uh, I think I'm getting back to this software soon. So, clear nights, clear skies, see you next time.